The billionaire space race is simply a name for a contest. In reality, there is SpaceX and then there is everyone else. Only Elon Musk's company, founded nearly two decades ago, has successfully launched a rocket booster into orbit and returned it safely. SpaceX has landed a 15-story tall rocket on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean. Also, it has transported NASA astronauts as well as private citizens to the International Space Station. Then there's Blue Origin, which dominated global headlines this week with its brief launch of Star Trek actor William Shatner into space. SpaceX followers, you are all aware of this. Today in this video, we are talking to you about what Jeff Bezos just did. But before that, we warmly welcome you to our channel. If you are new here, we upload daily updates from the space world. Only the SpaceX company produces thousands of table-sized communication satellites each year. SpaceX has the near-weekly launch cycle required to double the number of operational satellites in orbit in less than two years. Also, SpaceX is launching prototypes of the world's largest and most powerful rocket, the Starship, which is designed to transport humans to the moon. SpaceX's complete dominance of the rocket industry is unexpected. Today, more innovation is taking place in the commercial space sector than at any other time in history, and the launch services sector is especially competitive. Virgin Galactic, its sister company, is flying people to the edge of space in an air-launched space plane. Rocket Lab has created the first rocket engine powered by an electric pump and is attempting to catch it in the air with a net attached to a helicopter. Audrey Powers, William Shatner, Chris Boshazen and Glenn de Vries on the landing pad of Blue Origin's New Shepard after they flew into space near Van Horn, Texas on Wednesday. Blue Origin is the rocket company that is expected to be at a comparable level to technological achievements to SpaceX. Former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos founded the company in 2000, just two years before SpaceX established itself in California. Blue Origin was founded by Bezos with big aspirations. Bezos is inspired by the late Princeton futurist Gerard K. O'Neill in his desire to move heavy industry away from Earth and into space in order to cut carbon emissions. He wishes to lay the groundwork for an extraterrestrial economy in which thousands of people live and work in space. His company is developing a rocket as powerful as the one that carried Apollo astronauts to the moon. And it has collaborated with leading defense contractors such as Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper to develop a lunar lander that could return humans to the moon's surface. It has designed and built one of the most powerful rocket engines ever built. And it has signed contracts with the United Launch Alliance to supply the engine for its next generation Vulcan rocket. There is no denying that Bezos has a lot of vision. The question is, why can't the world's second richest man put it into action? On Wednesday, Jeff Bezos and William Shatner were in Van Horn, Texas. Blue Origin's master plan has begun to unravel in recent years. NASA awarded its lunar lander contract to SpaceX earlier this year, leaving Blue Origin in the dust. Following the loss of the contract, it has seen an escape of top engineering talent which has only amplified the company's already significant delays. Blue Origin has struggled to find its path in producing its powerful BE-4 rocket engine. So the first launch of ULA's Vulcan rocket has been pushed back to late 2022. This will put the engine's first flight five years behind schedule. Meanwhile, the first flight of the company's fabled New Glenn rocket, a heavy launch vehicle capable of lifting nearly 100,000 pounds into low Earth orbit, has been pushed back to late 2022 at the most. It was supposed to fly for the first time last year. Bezos didn't even get the distinction of being the first billionaire to launch his own rocket into space. Richard Branson completed a suborbital flight in his own space plane with Virgin Galactic just two weeks before Bezos flew to the edge of space this summer. What caused this to happen? Blue Origin employs thousands of the world's best rocket scientists and engineers. In addition, the company has access to a virtually limitless supply of money. Bezos, whose net worth is just under $200 billion, spends $1 billion per year on Blue Origin, out of his pocket. By all accounts, Blue Origin should be one of the world's most successful space companies. Blue Origin has all of the ingredients for success and becoming something truly fantastic, says Ali Abrams, the former head of Blue Origin Employee Communications, who recently wrote a journalist essay detailing safety concerns and casual racism at the company. 
despite the leadership's interventions. The engineers truly believe that, and they work hard every day to make that a reality. On Wednesday, Blue Origin's new Shepard rockets lift off near Van Horn, Texas. Blue Origin's problems, according to Abrams, have both a technical and a cultural dimension. On the technical side, Abrams stated that the company suffers from a massive amount of technical debt, engineering challenges that accumulate as a result of choosing the quickest solution rather than the best solution, as well as a relentless focus on speed, which has hampered its ability to properly address problems with its launch vehicles. She explained Blue Origin's exodus of top talent as engineers who grew tired of putting band-aids on problems. Technical debt is a problem that most companies face, but it's an incredible scale at Blue, Abrams said. It failed miserably in its transition from an R&D company to a production company. Abrams attributes some of Blue Origin's growing technical debt to the company's increasing emphasis on speed, an irony for a company whose motto is step-by-step step ferociously. She traces the growing pressure to move quickly back to 2017, when it became clear that the company was falling behind its rivals at SpaceX. She described Bezos's growing impatience with the pace of development, as well as his jealousy for the other billionaires who seemed to be making more progress than him. Within the company, the schedule was always a huge joke, Abrams said. We'd publicize the dates and employees would laugh because they knew it couldn't be done. Looking ahead, the question for Blue Origin is whether it can transform its culture in order to fulfill its mission. Many observers are skeptical, including Abrams, but perhaps a shift is on the way. Bezos stepped down as CEO of Amazon earlier this year, pledging to devote more time to Blue Origin. It remains to be seen whether Bezos can revitalize the company's culture with his grand vision for human space exploration and a sense of common purpose. There will be a lot of hard work and healing to do if they can actually put it in place for a good leadership team that is committed to moving forward in a different way, Abrams said. I believe it will take years for the employees' scars to heal. Senior management has been briefed on the findings and some of them have taken notes, according to the website Ars Technica. They've been disastrous. Among the criticisms were about the two firms contrasting technical decisions, but the most significant cultural differences were directly attributable to their leaders. Bezos grew to become the world's richest man by inventing, from the ground up, a global colossus that altered the way people shop. Musk, on the other hand, gate-crashed two long-established industries, automobiles and aerospace, that thought they were immune to artistic disruption, and he proved them wrong. With this, we have reached the end of our video. If you like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel to enjoy space updates every day. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow with new updates. Until next time.